Hello, and welcome to Agros of Physics. Today is day 92, and what I'd like to discuss today is refraction. Now, in many demonstrations in physics, we use lasers to show the law of reflection and even refraction in many cases. What laser is, is actually an acronym, and it stands for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. So L-A-S-E-R actually stands for um, something. It's not just a word. It has turned into a word, just like scuba in our, in our language, but it is an acronym and stands for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. Now what that means is that we take um, a source and we excite all of the electrons inside the source. The laser I use in my classroom is a helium neon laser. It produces red light. And what happens is there's gas inside the laser that is a combination of helium and neon. Well, when we put a high voltage through it, it's going to make the electrons inside the gas excited and they're all going to drop to a lower energy level. If you remember from chemistry, when electrons jump from higher to lower energy levels, they emit light. And that light combines to form a red color. Now, when that happens, because they're all excited and drop at the same time, they produce a coherent light source. So the coherent wave means that all the waveforms are in phase. And that's why a laser is able to project light over long distances, because all the light beams are coherent in phase and they constructively um, interfere with one another. Now, different lasers can produce different lights depending upon the gases that are inside. But I wanted to point out that laser is an acronym and it stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation and it produces a coherent light source. Now on to refraction. Basically refraction is something we talked about in terms of waves hitting a new boundary. And every time waves hit a new boundary three things happen. Reflection, refraction, and absorption. The absorption means it loses energy so the amplitude will go down. And reflection means some of the light will bounce off. We already talked about the fact that the law of reflection will hold for every beam of light that hits a surface. Now refraction is when the light is going to change speed inside the material. Now remember, light is not the only type of wave, but it's the type of wave we're talking about in this unit. So we're going to refer to everything in terms of light and its refraction. But other waves will refract as well. When they enter new materials, they will change speed. So refraction is simply the change in speed of a wave when it enters a material. Now light does that when it enters more optically dense materials. If you remember, sound waves sped up when they hit more density. Light waves, on the other hand, slow down. And the amount that light slows down is a level of what we call the index of refraction. And tomorrow we're going to have an equation that allows us to calculate the index of refraction, or if we knew the index, how fast light travels in a material. Now some ways that we can tell that light changes speed are some common examples of how we view our world. If you've ever put a pencil in, in a glass of water, you'll notice that the pencil at the air boundary appears to be at a different location than the pencil that's inside the water. And that's because inside the water, the light that's hitting the outside of the glass is changing speed differently than the light that's going into the air above the water. So the fact that it is refracting and changing speed is actually making the object appear in many cases to be twisted or broken. It's also why when you look at the bottom of a swimming pool from a deck, the swimming pool appears to be more shallow than it really is. If you look at a four foot swimming pool, you may think that it's only two feet deep when looking at, um, at the surface of the water from a deck. And that's because as the light travels out of the water, it's going to change speed and actually turn towards your eyes. Now, your brain knows that light travels in a straight line, just like Fermi's principle, and it's going to extend those lines back and produce whatever the um, image is in your mind. So the bottom of the pool will appear to be much shallower than it really is. That's why it's difficult for cats to catch goldfish in, um, in a, in a fishbowl. They try to grab the fish with their paw above the water, and they often miss because of the refraction of light. Smarter cats will put their paw into the fishbowl, and then it's much easier to catch the fish because both the paw and the fish are both refracting light the same. So if you're trying to catch fish, let's say, at a, at a pet store, the smarter employees will actually put the net into the 
fish tank, and then utilize the fact that the refraction of light for the net and the fish are the same. Someone trying to grab the fish from the top by dumping the net into the water will often come up with an empty net. So another example of that is if you um, view the sun at sunset. When you're seeing the sun, because the light refracts into the atmosphere, the sun already set when you actually view the sunset itself. So the sun is actually lower in the horizon than it appears at sunset. It may be that the sun sets at 430 and it really set at 425, maybe a couple of minutes before that it actually went below the horizon. Because of the refraction, we're able to get a little more daylight than we're entitled to because even though light travels in a straight line, it does turn when it hits the atmosphere. So a sunset is an example of refraction of light as well. Now, when you have refraction, it's important to realize that the difference in density is going to determine how much um, the light's going to refract. So more density difference, it's going to slow down more. And if we hit at a perpendicular direction to the boundary, the light is just going to change speed and travel in a straight line. If you're going at an angle, it's actually going to change speed and turn as well. So the refraction could result in the light changing direction also. If it's moving in perpendicular along a normal line, though, it won't change direction. It will just change speed. But any other angle other than zero, if it's 10 degrees or 20 degrees, it will actually turn. And there's a way to determine whether or not it will turn closer to the normal line or farther away. Just like reflection, we're always going to measure angles with light with respect to a normal line. So if the boundary of the surface is horizontal, we're going to draw a vertical normal line and then measure the angles with respect to that. Now when we're traveling, what will happen is an angle of 10 degrees will turn into 8 degrees if we enter a more dense material. So if we slow down, the angle gets smaller. The way I try to remember this is less to more dense, the angle is less. So less, more, less. So if we have an angle of 10 degrees and we get into a more dense material, the angle of refraction is going to be smaller than 10. Now, of course, we're going to have an equation that denotes this. We'll talk about that in a later video. But for now, it's good to know whether or not your answer makes sense when you find an answer in a physics problem moving forward. So remember, less to more dense, the angle is less. On the other hand, if the object's going to speed up, if light's going to speed up in the new material, it's going to turn away from the normal. So if you go from more to less dense, the angle is more. So more to less is more. So if we had a 10 degree angle and we're traveling, let's say, in water, which is more optically dense than air, we enter the air and we turn away from the normal. That's why the swimming pool appears more shallow than it really is. Now that being said, having a general relationship, less, more, less, or more, less, more, will only get us so far. This is just a quantitative, uh, a qualitative, I'm sorry, way to view refraction. We're going to have a, a quantitative version tomorrow when we have an equation. But if you remember for now, if we were in more dense and we go to less dense optically, it will be a bigger angle. And if we go from less dense to more dense, the angle will get smaller. We have a number of examples of this. If we're, we're thinking of a car traveling, um, let's say, on a pavement and all of a sudden it hits mud, if it hits the mud at an angle, that front tire, the front corner tire that hits the mud will slow down first. The tire that's still on the pavement will still travel at the same speed and the, the car will actually rotate closer to a normal line. If you're going from mud and then all of a sudden get onto pavement, that first tire that hits will speed up first and you're going to turn away from the normal. There's an example of uh, soldiers marching in a line and if they're in, in beat and they're traveling together in, in unison, as they enter a more dense material, they're going to slow down and the actual line will turn um, slightly and it will turn uh, closer to a normal line. It's harder to visualize that because the soldiers are marching in formation across um, you know, a number of soldiers wide, so the whole line will actually shift and, and rotate. What's important to think about there visually, though, is that if the speed is going to slow down, that means the wavelength is going to get closer together. So if you're traveling faster than enter a more dense material, 
you're going to get bunched together. You're going to actually have a smaller wavelength if we're thinking of the soldiers in terms of waves of light. That being said, the car example is a classic. I think what I'm going to do is take the um, take the whiteboard out and try to visualize that with some uh, matchbox cars. We'll take those out in a little while, and I'll show you how the tire would change uh, speed and then change direction. So I'll give you a visual of that in a few minutes. That being said, I just want to end talking about the cat again. Um, anytime we're looking into water from above, it's going to appear shallower than it really is. So a cat trying to grab a fish that might be swimming in a lake and the cat is on uh, a dock is going to think the fish is actually more shallow than it really is. So as the cat tries to grab the fish, they're going to, going to come up with an empty paw. So refraction is when light or any wave enters a new material and changes speed. For light, if it's a more dense material, it will slow down. And if we go from less to more dense, the angle will be smaller. If we go from more dense to less dense, it will speed up and the angle will get bigger. On uh, the case, the, the one case where the angle is zero with respect to the normal, if it's going perpendicular to the surface, light will just slow down or speed up and travel in a straight line um, continually. But refraction is when the light changes speed. And that's it for our uh, qualitative discussion of refraction. Tomorrow we'll talk more about a qualitative discussion and we'll have an equation that allows us to calculate more precisely what our angles will be. For now, let's take out the whiteboard and I'll try to show you a few visuals with the matchbox cars on how um, the light will turn when it enters a new material depending upon its density difference. That's it for today. I thank you. Now refraction is the change in speed of a light ray when it enters a new material. So as it enters a new medium, it's going to change speeds. Now what happens is if the light ray is coming in like this, it actually acts similar to a water wave traveling in like this. So light rays traveling this way perpendicular to these water waves if you think about it that way. When it hits the new boundary, if this is let's say air and this is water, what's going to happen is it's going to slow down. But since all of this plane wave is in the same phase, the part that hits first is going to slow down first. So the effect is that the wave will actually change direction when it changes speed. So it'll look like that and then it'll change direction. So the light ray comes in here and then it'll start to turn like this. Now these should be drawn a little flatter. More like, more dramatic. So it'll look more like this. Now you'll notice two things with this. First, the wavelength's getting shorter because it's slowing down and it's changing direction. So in this case, without all the perpendicular lines, it's going to look something like this as it enters. Now what happens is we can have light traveling through and into a new material. And if we're here observing it, maybe it's a glass and we're looking through the water, there's another surface here. Our brain is still going to extend the line back in a straight line to create the image. And when we create the image, it's going to be in a different location. The original image might be over here. The new image will appear to be over here. This is why pools look more shallow than they really are if you're standing on top of a deck. The water level, if you're standing here, light that's traveling from the bottom of the pool is going to escape here. And because it's going from water into air now, it's going to speed up. So when these lines speed up, this point here goes faster and it's going to rotate. It's going to rotate like this. And what will happen is your brain will extend the line backward and you think 
when you see a whole bunch of lines, that this is the bottom of the pool. So it'll actually look more shallow than it is. The pool is, in reality, deeper, but because of the refraction, it's going to appear more shallow. And that's even, you know, the water line's still up here. But the bottom of the pool will appear to be higher than it really is. And that's because when the light ray travels into new material, it will change speed. If it goes straight directly down, and if we measure everything from the normal line, so if we go like this, and the light ray travels here and goes into the new material, so this was air again, and this is water, what will happen is it will still slow down. However, it won't turn. So it's only going to turn if it has an angle to begin with. And in this case, it would turn like that. Now, it'll be a lot easier if we draw the normal line. You'll be able to notice it more clearly. And, of course, I didn't measure that normal line. But this angle here, the original angle, is going to be bigger than that second angle. We're going to call this theta 1, the original, and theta 2, the, reflect, uh, the refracted ray. We're going to be able to do this quantitatively later.